This video will talk about zeros of functions. Then we have the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says every complex polynomial with a degree greater than or equal to 1 has at least one complex zero, a plus bi. 2 is a complex number, it's 2 plus 0i. And then we have the linear factorization theorem that says you have this polynomial, degrees n greater than or equal to 1, and then it has exactly n linear factors and can be written a times x minus c1 times x minus c2 and so on, as long as a is not equal to 0. And c1, c2, c3, these numbers that are being subtracted from x are not necessarily distinct, but they are complex numbers, or the product of non-zero constant and an exactly n linear factors. That's another way to word that. Let's try it. Rewrite the polynomial q of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 21x squared minus 100 as a product of linear factors and find the zeros. And then it gives us this hint. It says let u equal x squared. u is equal to x squared. And that means that if I have u squared, that's equal to x squared squared or x to the fourth. Instead of x to the fourth, we can say that that's really u squared. And then instead of x squared, we can say that that's u, and then we have our minus 100. So now it's just a quadratic that we can factor. Well, factors of u squared are going to be u and u, and factors of negative 100 that will add up to 21 would be minus 4 and plus 25. But now I need to be sure that I go back. Well, u was equal to x squared, so both of these factors start with x squared, and then it's x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 25. Those are the linear factors. But if I wanted to find the zeros, I could say that x minus 4, x squared minus 4 was equal to 0. So x squared would be equal to positive 4. And take the square root of both sides, x would be equal to plus or minus 4. There's two of my zeros. And then I have x squared plus 25 is equal to 0, and take it to the other side, x squared is equal to negative 25, and if I take the square root of both sides, I find out that x is equal to plus or minus, square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 25 is 5. So those are my two factors, and actually these are not linear factors because they've got quadratics in them, so I need to rewrite them as these are like my c's. Okay, these are like the c's. Remember it was x minus c was the factors. So I have x minus 4, x plus 4, and then here I have, again, this is c, so x plus 5i and x minus 5i. So if I want it to be linear, I'm going to have to have the i's in my factorization. Now they want us to write this one as a product of linear factors and find the zeros. We can look and see if we could just factor it just the way it is. We've got four terms here, so let's see. If we take a common factor of x squared out, we'll be left with x minus 3. And we take a common factor here out as negative 9, and we'd have x minus 3. So that leaves us with the common factor of x minus 3 and x squared minus 9 as my other factor. And this is linear. But this one is not, so we have to go one step further. And this would be x minus 3 and x plus 3. So we found the linear factors, and now we just have to find the zeros. Well, we have x minus 3. We actually had that more than once, so we just have to, so x would be equal to 3. And then we have the x plus 3, and that will give us x equal negative 3. So we have this zeros of multiplicity. That's basically, if you have a degree of polynomial that's greater than 1, and you've got these linear factors that occur more than once, like in the previous problem. Here we had x minus 3 that happened twice. So that's what we're talking about. Then it says that that 0, which is c, has a multiplicity of m. So again, going back here, we could have written this as x minus 3 quantity squared. So the 0 is 3, and the multiplicity is 2. This exponent right here is going to tell me how many factors of that I actually have. So I only see on a graph one point, but I know that there were two there because that exponent tells me that. So this says factor completely, name the zeros and their multiplicities. So this would be x and x, and factors of 36 that add up to 12 would be plus 6 and plus 6. And then in here, I'm going to have x and x. And factors of negative 24 that add up to 2 would be plus 6 and minus 4. And then I have this x minus 4. 
So all three of them are completely factored now. And I want to think about this. I have x plus 6, so x is going to be equal to negative 6. And it has a multiplicity of how many of them do I have? 1, 2, 3. So the multiplicity is equal to 3. Or I could write that as x plus 6 cubed. And then I have this x minus 4, so x would be equal to positive 4. And it has a multiplicity, and that's equal to 2 of them. Or we could simplify this and say x minus 4 quantity squared. So find the zeros of this and then write the function in factored form and assume a. And it says try 1 and negative 1 first. That means synthetic division. That's what they're talking about. So we can find zeros from synthetic division. We learned that. So I'm going to try 1. See if that works. It's on the outside. On the inside we have 4, 8, negative 3, and negative 9. Nothing's missing. If I bring down the 4 and then 4 times 1 would be 4 and remember if we do that that means that this one is a 0 because the remainder was 0 and this also means that now I have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 and we could do a couple of different things with this one we could just try to factor it like we see it or we could try synthetic division again but actually come find out that we have rational zeros so let's just factor it from this point it's a quadratic we could use our calculator quadratic for formula if we really wanted to but this one's not too bad 2x and 2x factors of 9 that add up to with those 2x's to 12 well that looks like 3 and 3 because then I'd have 6 plus 6 and then that tells me that my 0 is x is equal to negative 3 over 2 so here's one of my zeros and here's one of my zeros and they want it in completely factored form so I would write it as that first 0, x equal 1, would be x minus 1. And the other 0 is 2x plus 3, but we have two factors of those. So there's our completely factored form. The complex zeros, if a polynomial has real coefficients, the complex zeros must occur in conjugate pairs. That's the important part right there. So you'd have a plus bi and a minus bi. So it's asking us here to find the polynomial having real coefficients degree 3, Okay, so that means that all my multiplicities have to add up to my uh, degree of the polynomial. So degree 3 and zeros at negative 5 and negative 3i. This tells us that we're also going to have to have plus 3i because of this definition here. So writing that x minus c, so it would be x plus 5, and then we have x plus 3i and its conjugate x minus 3i. It says find the polynomial having real coefficients. We don't have a polynomial here. We're just factored. So we have to keep going. And we can say that this is x plus 5. I'm just going to leave that one. And this one is x squared. And then the minus 3i and plus 3i cancel out. And then we have minus 9i squared. Almost there. So x plus 5 and this is x squared plus 9 converting the i squared so now we can multiply a little easier so x times x squared is x cubed x times 9 is plus 9x 5 times x squared and then 5 times 9 so if we simplify the polynomial that we're looking for is x cubed plus 5x squared plus 9x plus 45 if we put it in standard form and you'll notice that we have a degree of 3 which is exactly what it said that we needed to have. Find the polynomial in factored form and find the rational in complex zeros of both kinds, assuming the leading coefficient is 1. All right, so here we go. When you look at this and you say, I really don't know how to factor that, there's a couple of things you could do. We could do synthetic division again, and you can always start with 1 and negative 1. Those are always good places to start. Or you could also, and we may do this one both ways, um, use the calculator. So I'm going to put y equal, and I'm just going to do a standard window because all I really care to see are my intersection points here, or my zeros. So second trace, I could just do the zero, two, and ask for left bound, so I need to be down the left-hand side of my graph, so that would be on top above this press enter, and then I need to be below that x-intercept and we find out that x is equal to x is equal to negative 1 and then I'll write that later let's find the other one second trace 2 for the 0 and I want to keep going through beyond this side now 
And now the left is going to be below the x-axis in this case. Enter, and then keep going, and go above it, and press Enter, and then Enter again, and we find that it's 1.5. So we said that x was negative 1, and x is equal to a positive 1.5. And if we make that into a fraction, it's equal to 3 over 2. So we have two factors, and that's x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. What I did was 3 over 2 equals, was equal to x, and then I bring the 2 over by multiplying both sides, so 3 is equal to 2x, and then we bring the 3 to the other side, and we have 0 is equal, there's a 0, is equal to 2x minus 3. So that's how I got that factor. But that's only 2. There might be multiplicities on it, I really don't, but I know for a fact there aren't. So what do we do about this? Well then, we definitely had to do the combination of synthetic division. But this one then tells me that I needed the negative 1. I might have tried the 1 and been in trouble. So I have the 2 and a negative 1 and 3 and negative 3 and negative 9. I could try to factor my four terms, but I also know that I have a 0 at 3 halves. So bring down the 2, and if you don't believe me, 3 halves times 2 over 1 is just going to be 3, and negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so I get to bring down the 6, and then the 3 halves times the 6, well, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so 3 times 3 would be 9, and it's a positive, so there's my remainder. And now I'm ready to say that my other factor is 2x squared plus 6. It's now in factored form. I know two of the zeros because we graphed it to find those zeros, but I have to find the other two, these complex ones. So I'm going to change colors here and say that 2x squared plus 6 equals 0. So 2x squared will equal negative 6, and x squared will equal negative 3. And then that tells me that x is equal to plus or minus i, and then the square root of 3, because we don't know it. That's not a perfect square. So there are my other 2. There's 1, 2, and then 3, 4 right here.